Hello, hello, and thank you for joining me. It's Brandy's World, and I'm Brandy Beckett. Today, I want to talk a little about what it is like to transition in our politically fevered climate here in the United States. Transgender communities have been under attack and especially transgender children. Transgender children are being attacked left and right in this country for existing. It is not easy for a transgender person to get the medical treatments that they need to treat gender dysphoria. I discovered my gender identity when I was in my 40s. And it was so challenging for me as a person in their 40s to get the medical treatment I needed. I had to jump through so many unnecessary hoops just to get treatments for me, to treat gender dysphoria. And for children to get the treatment they need, my goodness, there are so many extra hoops for them to jump through. So, mm. well, let's get into it. Let's, let's talk a little bit about my experiences. I, if I had discovered my gender identity when I was a young kid and, and I could have gone through social treatments and people could have could have identified and reflected back to me, I might not have been suicidal at 10 years old and at 12 years old. I might not have been a loathsome little child who was self-loathing and, and hated himself as a child. I didn't know why, because I didn't have, I didn't have the tools to recognize my gender dysphoria. I was just trying to live up to an assignment that was placed on me. And I, and, I, and I had two brothers growing up. I had an older brother and a younger brother, and they all had friends around too. And I was trying to live up to an assignment, and I didn't know why I hated myself so much on the inside and why I felt so uncomfortable in my skin. But I was trying to live up to an assignment I knew my, my attraction was towards females, towards girls. And so I thought since I was attracted to girls, of course I'm a boy, of course I'm a boy. That's what I thought. Because I thought that was the only way to judge your gender identity was to look at your genitals and, and, and see what they're attracted to. And, and look at your sexual orientation and say, what am I attracted to? And what genitals do I have? Therefore, that must be my gender identity. That's what I thought. I wish I was more, I wish it was explained to me when I was a kid, how gender identity comes from within and how it may not align with that expression and aligning your expression and your gender identity makes you a whole person. I never felt like a whole person for most of my life. I never felt like I could live up to the assignment I was given and I tried. I tried and I tried to live up to that assignment. I just felt like a failure every time I tried because it never felt right on the inside. It never felt right to me. It never felt good to me. Expressing masculinity was always felt like I was performing, acting something that wasn't me. I was trying to play a character that wasn't me. I just felt like my whole childhood and my whole adolescence and most of my adulthood, I was just trying to be something because I was assigned that something. I wasn't trying to be me because I couldn't look on the inside. If I attempted to look on the inside instantly, I saw it wasn't what the assignment was. And you're supposed to follow the assignment, not inside yourself is what I thought. 
So I tried to follow that assignment for 42 years of my life. I tried to follow that assigned identity I was given. I tried to perform it. I tried to express it. I tried and I tried and I tried. And then one day, put on feminine clothing and it opened my eyes and I looked inside myself and realized the identity is not that what I was assigned or what I was trying to betray. My identity was me and it was this feminine, awesome, strong person. And I wanted to explore and tap into that person. And, and when I started to look inside and see that person for who I am, I wanted to pull it out and express it. And in order to express who I am, it, it, it took some modifications from my social mirror and the reflection in the mirror on the wall. So it took social transitioning for me, social affirmation of my gender identity. But since I was already a person who went through a masculine puberty long time ago, I had masculine features that I was reflecting in a mirror that I didn't, wasn't me, didn't feel like me, wasn't, wasn't right. So I have medical treatments augmentations, molding of this flesh tissue that I have, my body. And through our amazing medical technology and medical know-how of the, in, the endocrine system of your hormones, I have an amazing doctor who understands the hormone system in the human body so good. And he helped with his knowledge in the medicine to adapt my body to be more me. And isn't that what we want from our children, for them to be them? And I'll let you in on a little secret. It's not easy to get surgeries. Even as a trans adult, you have to jump through extra, extra, extra hoops that cis people do not. And for transgender children to get treatments medically, they have to jump through so many hoops. For adults, you have to go through not just one psychologist and, and have a letter written to tell the world that you are, you are well enough to make decisions on your own. But you have to do two, two letters saying that you are capable of making a decision on your own. That is for transgender adults who want to get surgical treatments before they do the surgery. And if you wait a couple years to do the surgery, you have to go back to that psychologist and the other psychologist or two other psychologists. You have to get people to write letters to say that you are capable of making a medical decision about your autonomy. That's where we are. So you think that people are just lining up to get surgeries and chopping body parts off of children? It's ridiculous. Okay. I am going to leave you, as I always do, with this message. Love yourself, but more importantly, like yourself. And treat people the way they want to be treated. Bye-bye for now.